Wow, welcome everyone. Could I have your attention please? I'd like to welcome you all to our regular council meeting of May the 14th. It's a very special council meeting. I'm glad to see the large attendance because we have a lot of special events to commemorate today. Uh, I'd like to welcome and acknowledge the presence of our Member of Parliament, Anthony Housefather. <laughs> our Member of the National Assembly, David Birnbaum. <laughs> and our Interim Commander of uh, Police Station 9, uh, Commander Lavallee. <laughs> Bienvenue. Vous, vous êtes bienvenu à Côte-Saint-Luc. Merci pour être avec nous ce soir. Okay, so, um, as is the custom of this council, well, I don't know if I've introduced everybody here first, so let's go through them. So in case you don't know who's with us, we have Frederick Bacal, who is the Associate City Clerk, David Torgman, Councillor, Oren Sabag, Mike Cohen, Ruth Kovac, Dita Burko, Stephen Erdely, and Mitch Kajowski, City Councillors, our City Manager, Tanya Bramovich, Associate City Managers, Nadia DeFuria, and Jonathan Schechter. So as is our custom now in Council, we uh, commemorate different events during the month. And this past month, last month if you were here, you would have seen us commemorate Yom HaShoah, where we showed a video and recognized uh, a, a survivor of the Holocaust. And uh, since then, on April the 19th, two events occurred on April the 19th. It was the 70th anniversary of the State of Israel, and it was the 75th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. So I posted a video on that day, which we will show now, so I don't need to explain what it is, and it will directly relate to the um, event we will follow up with right after. So Daryl, we can show that video, and then we'll move into our next commemoration. April 19th marks two very important anniversaries, the 75th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, and on the Jewish calendar, the 70th anniversary of the founding of the State of Israel, Yom Ha'atzmaut. Shortly after the German invasion of Poland in September 1939, more than 400,000 Jews in Warsaw were confined to an area of the city that was little more than one square mile. My father-in-law, Eddie Agadinsky, his two brothers, parents, and many other of his relatives were among them. In November 1940, the ghetto was sealed off by brick walls, barbed wire, and armed guards. The Nazis controlled how much food was let in. Disease and starvation killed thousands each month. In July 1942, Nazi Germany ordered the transport of the Jews to extermination camps. They were told they were being taken to labor camps. Two months later, 265,000 people had been sent to extermination camps. Only about 60,000 Jews remained in the Warsaw Ghetto. En avril mai 1943, les Juifs du ghetto de Varsovie organisaient un soulèvement suite à des rumeurs selon lesquelles les Nazis voulaient déporter ceux qui restaient des habitants du ghetto vers le centre de mise à mort de Treblinka. On April 19, 1943, the Nazis sent in tanks and artillery to destroy the ghetto and everyone in it. The Jews fought back in a month of fighting in what came to be called the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. It inspired other revolts and extermination camps and ghettos throughout Germany and Eastern Europe. 7,000 Jews perished during the uprising, while near, nearly 50,000 others who survived were sent to extermination or labor camps. La même année, les habitants se soulevèrent contre les Allemands dans les ghettos de Vilnius, Bialystok et bien d'autres. Ils se révoltaient pour l'honneur des Juifs et pour venger le massacre de tant d'entre eux. It's hard to believe that five years after the Warsaw Ghetto uprising, an independent state was founded, Israel, where Jews would be able to defend themselves if need be, and where any Jew from any country around the world would always have a safe haven. 25 years ago, I traveled with my father-in-law, Eddie Agadinsky, to Poland to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto uprising. Together with my wife, mother-in-law, and mother, Eddie showed us the places he hid and tried to explain how he managed to survive. The last time Eddie Jagodzinski walked through the courtyard in this part of Warsaw, he was desperate, hiding from the Nazis. When I opened this door, I, I moved out the bar, I also opened the next door. He's never been back until now. 
but the terrors of the Warsaw Ghetto, the memories of running from place to place, are still raw. I had the feeling that I'm a hunted animal. I was, I was supposed to be, uh, I wasn't supposed to be alive. Everyone in his family was killed by the Nazis. His wife, daughter, and son-in-law still can't believe he survived. In August of 1942, Eddie, who was suffering from a leg injury, was smuggled out of the ghetto with his mother. He was taken to the ghetto of Shedlitz, to a hospital for surgery, as he had family there. Two days after the surgery, the ghetto of Shedlitz was liquidated. Eddie showed us the window in the hospital from which he escaped and the shed behind the hospital where he hid for several days during the liquidation until the Germans had left. In December of 1942, his brother came searching for him and informed him that their father had been taken to Majdanek concentration camp where he was killed. Eddie informed his brother that their mother had been killed in Shedlitz during the liquidation. On Christmas Eve of 1942, the two brothers, dressed as Christians, took the train back to Warsaw and re-entered the ghetto. While both of Eddie's brothers were eventually killed in the ghetto, Eddie survived the uprising, found false papers, which he used to live outside the ghetto, and eventually returned to the ruins of the ghetto, where he was saved from certain death by a man who carried him to a bunker where for the last three months of the war, he was nursed back to health and was liberated. As the sole survivor of his family, he came to Canada and eventually, like so many others, ended up in Cote St. Luke. Thinking of Eddie's story and so many other survivors makes the celebration of the 70th anniversary of the founding of the State of Israel all the more special. The country was founded as a refuge for Jewish people fleeing persecution. It was the realization of the Jewish people's long-standing dream to establish a modern Jewish state in its historical homeland. Like Canada, Israel has two official languages, Hebrew and Arabic. Like Canada, Israel has a diverse population with immigrants from across the world adding to its society. Like Canada, it's a democracy with a strong, independent judiciary, a free press, and innovative industries. We hope the day will come when Israel will be able to live in peace. But in the meantime, we want our friends in Israel to know, as Cote St. Lucas, as Quebecers, as Canadians, we stand with Israel on the 70th anniversary of its independence. <laughs> on May the 8th, we um, commemorate Victory in Europe Day. And today, present with us, we have veteran, Mr. Rubin, and we thank you so much for being with us. We also have the president of the Brigadier Frederick Quiche Branch, number seven, seven, uh, 97, Alan J. Levine, um, as well as your family and all of you that are here. And uh, we made a special video to commemorate VE Day, and then we're going to have a few words from our member of parliament and our member of the National Assembly. So we can show that video now, and then we'll ask you to come forward. This is the BBC Home Service. We're interrupting programs to make the following announcement. It is understood that in accordance with arrangements between the three great powers, an official announcement will be broadcast by the Prime Minister at three o'clock tomorrow. In view of this fact, tomorrow, Tuesday, will be treated as victory in Europe Day. After nearly six long years, the war in Europe is finally over. May 8, 1945, is declared Victory in Europe Day. Spontaneous celebrations erupt throughout the world. Meanwhile, of course, Londoners had begun their non-stop two-day celebration. The end of the German war had come 11 months after the landings in Normandy. V-Day came less than a year after D-Day. But it was the end of nearly six years of war in Europe. A great crowd has collected already. Thousands upon thousands of people gathered to share this historic day with the King and Queen. Listen to the crowd. The day of the victory is the 8th of May 1945. It's the date of the capitulation sans condition of l'Allemagne and the arrest of the combat of the Second World War. Today we celebrate freedom. 
remembering those we have lost and commemorating and thanking those who have fought to ensure our freedom. The veterans that served in the Second World War were many Canadians, many who made Cote St. Luke their home. They helped build this nation, and we thank them. They helped build this community, and it is what it is today, thanks to them. But we also remember those individuals who fought in the wars prior and since, as well as those individuals who were prisoners or in ghettos like Mordechai and Alevich, who fought with young Jewish individuals against the Nazis. I'm very proud of those who have fought for our country. And now you will hear a few words from the president of the Legion, Frederick Kish Branch 97, Alan J. Levine. One million Canadian soldiers wore the uniform as part of the United Front that defeated Germany, Hitler, and the Nazi regime in the Second World War. Of those soldiers, 42,000 left their hopes, their dreams, and their blood on the battlefields across Europe, stretching from Dieppe to North Africa. They had won, they had won a terrible and tough victory. On May the 8th, 1945, Canadians and the world celebrated the defeat of the Hitler Nazi regime. One lady put $50 in the poppy campaign can. I said, that's a generous gift. She says, I love the Canadian soldiers. They saved me, they rescued me. They came to the concentration camps and they freed us. And they hugged us and they gave us chocolate bars. I took my chocolate bar and I ate it, wrapper and all, because you see, I didn't know what a chocolate bar was. Family members were so thrilled that the boys were coming home. The boys and girls of the Second World War were coming home, coming home to see, in some cases, children that they had never seen. My late mother and my late mother-in-law gave birth to my sister Gloria and my late sister Phyllis while their husbands were overseas. They were thrilled to see their husbands. The children had to adjust a new man had come into the home, but they were here. They were here, many wounded, mentally and physically, but strong enough to rebuild the country. And they did. They rebuilt Canada and made it stronger. And that is why we must remember. We must remember the victims, six million Jews and many, many more innocent victims paid the price for this terrible regime. We must remember for the suffering of the soldiers. We must remember for the sacrifices of the families. And we must remember to be ever vigilant because history repeats itself. So now I'm going to call upon our member of parliament and our member of the National Assembly to say a few words, and then I'm going to ask the council to join them and Mr. Rubin and Alan J. Levine for a photo. So, um, Anthony, come forward. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you wish. Uh, that would probably be this one. Uh, this one. Now it's on. No? Try it now? Yeah. So, um, uh, so, <laughs> so Mitchell and members of council, uh, to Alan Rubin, who I'm so glad that there's a veteran who's actually joined us today, and Alan Levine, who's kept up the Legion despite numerous losses. It's a real pleasure to speak to all of you on this occasion of the uh, VE Day anniversary. One of the things that was always one of my proudest moments of the year as mayor of Cote St. Luke was speaking at VE Day because I got a chance to thank a number of people 
who had served their country in a way that went beyond anything that I ever could have done or understood. The veterans of the Second World War went abroad and fought against one of the world's worst dictators, one of the most tyrannical men who ever lived, and armies that followed him. And they did so hungry, cold, wet, wondering if they'd ever see their families again. And they did so in order so that we, today, may live in freedom, so that we may live in a country where we have freedom of speech, freedom of religion, where we don't have to worry every single day about whether or not our families will survive to the next day. The prosperity that we enjoy in Canada today is due to veterans like Mr. Rubin. And the appreciation that I was able to express in those early days when I was in my 20s and I first got into politics was incredible because in those days, you didn't have just one veteran here, you had a hundred veterans that marched in a parade, that led the services, that led the ceremony, that walked through the streets of Cote St. Luke in pride, carrying the Canadian flag, the Quebec flag, and the Cote St. Luke flag. And it's different now because we've lost so many of those veterans, and now it's up to us, those who heard those veterans, to keep their stories, to tell their stories, to make sure those stories are known to future generations. Et donc, c'est pour moi un grand honneur d'avoir l'opportunité de rappeler à tous ceux et celles qui sont ici que ces hommes et ces femmes qui ont battu pour notre pays et pour nos alliés dans la Deuxième Guerre mondiale étaient les héros. And Canada, small as we are, made a true difference in the Second World War. You walk through the streets of Holland where the Canadian soldiers liberated the country and the gratitude to Canadians even still today is palpable. Now our country wasn't perfect. Our immigration record during the Second World War was horrible. And I'm so proud of the fact that we are finally going to have an apology in the House of Commons for Canada's immigration policy in the Second World War and for refusing the St. Louis to dock in Canada. Because our history, <laughs> our history has a lot of proud moments but it has a lot of horrible moments too. And as a Jewish Canadian, it is very important to me, and I know many in our community, that that be apologized for, and that we recognize, though we do great things, we've also done terrible things. So I conclude by saying to Mr. Rubin, and to all of those veterans who are still with us today, thank you so much for your service. You have done your country proud, and we remember all of those who went and didn't come back, because they were equally heroes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anthony. So I'm gonna have David speak and then we'll, we'll take a photo afterwards with Mr. Rubin and the whole gang. Mr. Rubin, Mr. Alan Levine, Mr. Le Maire, Anthony Housefather, Conseiller, Conseiller, Mr. Le Commandant. Um, it's my honor to be with you as, as well tonight. Um, and to, I guess, understand that the burden, as Anthony alludes to, is now greater on us and more difficult because we don't speak from direct experience. Uh, but I commend uh, the city of Cote St. Luke for always understanding that amongst its daily responsibilities of providing for this wonderful community uh, is that additional responsibility of remembrance um, that is uh, imposed upon all of us um, because it's more difficult to learn the lessons of sacrifice and selflessness if you haven't lived them. I was struck just reading a little bit about VED uh, today uh, to note that Harry Truman celebrated his birthday on the first VED day 73 years ago. And he dedicated the day to Franklin Delano, Delano Roosevelt, 
a Republican president from a Democratic president who had died a year earlier and uh, felt so deeply sorrowful that uh, FDR wasn't there for that day. And I thought, and, and with respect, that's not a message or an experience that compares to those of, 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 of you and the hundreds of thousands who made ultimate sacrifices. But I thought it was poignant at a time in our, the life of the planet where some of the values that go to the expressions we use every day, I've got your back, don't worry, I'll take care of you, this one's on me. The kind of self-sacrifice that was so ultimately profound in the work that all of you did. Est-ce qu'on se rappelle de ça? Est-ce qu'on se rappelle comment on est chanceux aujourd'hui? Et est-ce qu'on se donne la tâche quotidiennement de pratiquer ces mêmes valeurs? Parce que pour moi, voilà le message que vous nous avez légué. And that belongs to all of us. And it becomes a more burdensome and important legacy with the inevitable passage of time. So I, I trust that we take the example of Coates and Luke and we realize that there is a burden on us to make sure we don't forget. And from that point of view, I congratulate Anthony and, and our Prime Minister for the courageous gesture of the impending apology over the St. Louis, because uh, uh, that's part of remembering. It's part of the responsibility of moving on from the legacy that was so preciously given to us by the heroic uh, women and men uh, some 73 years ago. And qu'on n'oublie pas, and we continue to honor your memory. Thank you. Yes. We're getting to that. Okay, so today we celebrate freedom, we commemorate the past, and we also thank uh, our community and the individuals who helped build our community. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is to recognize that uh, the Jewish community has been in, um, in, Mont in the greater Montreal area for over 250 years, and the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue is celebrating 250th anniversary this year. So uh, Council Burko is going to read a resolution and make a few comments in honor of that anniversary. Oui. Okay, I'm going to start in French. Attendu que la congrégation Spanish et Portuguese de Montréal of Sheriff Israel est la première congrégation juive fondée au Canada en 1768. Attendu qu'en 2018, cette congrégation célèbre son 250e anniversaire. Whereas its original founders of Sephardic descent came from England, the history of the synagogue first known as Shirith Israel 
reflects the various waves of migration that constitute Jewish Montreal. Whereas today this synagogue has evolved into one of the most diverse congregations on the island, regrouping Jews of Ashkenazi and Sephardic descent with origins in Spain, Portugal, Great Britain, Iran, Iraq, Lebanon, Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, as well as those with origins in Northern, Western and Eastern Europe. Whereas this congregation of 800 families practicing different traditions under the same roof is a microcosm of Canadian multiculturalism and harmony and diversity, and is a symbol of inclusion and positive intercommunity relations. Whereas the Spanish Portuguese synagogue has contributed to the well being of the Montreal Jewish community through the creation of the Baron de Hirsch Institute, now OMETS, which has provided social services to the community since 1890. Whereas many residents of Cote Saint Luc have historical ties to the synagogue, whereas the city of Cote Saint Luc would like to recognize this congregation's proud history and join in celebrating this milestone, as well as uh, has already been done by uh, the Council of the City of Montreal. It is moved that the Cote Saint Luc Council hereby recognizes the 225th anniversary. 250th anniversary of the Spanish and Portuguese synagogue and the social services it has provided to the Jewish community and the positive influence on inter-community relations in Quebec. And that a copy of this resolution be sent to Monsieur Edmond Elbaz, President of the Spanish and Portuguese, so that it may be shared with members of the Board of Directors, staff, and members of the congregation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Burku. And I also want to add that uh, the city of Cote St. Luke will be putting out an exhibit that has been on display. It was at City Hall, the city of uh, Montreal City Hall, when they had their opening of the uh, festivities. And it will be at the library for the months of September and October. I encourage everybody to go see it. It uh, gives uh, pic pictures and the story of uh, the Jews coming to Montreal and the life and how they've enriched the life of the greater Montreal area over the, over the last 250 years. Um, Mr. Mayor, this is a, I've passed a, Okay, so I've moved by moved Councillor Berko. And anyone else? to second it? Councillor Kovac, any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Carried unanimously. Thank you. Merci. And now we move on to, um, it's, tomorrow is National Denim Day. National Denim Day, since 1997, Denim Day is the main fundraising event for the Cure Foundation, which raises funds to help research into breast cancer. Donations also help purchase, purchase medical equipment and provide community services to women and men fighting breast cancer. The City of Cote St. Luke staff have been participating in Denim Day which is held on the first Tuesday following Mother's Day since the year 2000. And we've raised over $7,000. So we're wearing these uh, ribbons and we have a box. Anybody wants to give donation? We suggest a donation of $5. That's what our staff uh, minimally give. And you can wear your ribbon proud. And of course, wherever you are tomorrow, wear jeans, which uh, as you all know, I'm sort of a leader in that. <laughs> so uh, yes, tomorrow is the day that it's good for all of you to join us. Um, all right, and now, maintenant je veux demander à le commandant la vallée de venir faire une présentation spéciale. Uh, il va vous donner le micro. Et aussi au revoir. Euh, donc, euh, ce soir, ça, je viens vous voir et c'est euh, un immense plaisir pour moi parce que je remplace, euh, en fait, Jean O'Malley qui était le commandant du PTQ-9 et je suis en intérim, mais c'est avec un grand plaisir que je le fais. Euh, je l'ai demandé de jouer ce rôle-là ici auprès de votre communauté. Donc, euh, aujourd'hui, euh, j'ai euh, un certificat euh, de remerciement qui est à remettre à Mme Ruth Kovac. Je vais en faire la lecture. Okay. Alors, euh, sincère remerciement à Ruth Kovac. Le service de police de la Ville de Montréal tient à souligner votre travail et votre engagement exceptionnel 
dans la communauté de Côte-Saint-Luc durant de nombreuses années. Vos nombreuses heures de bénévolat, sans oublier votre sport, ont contribué au bien-être de tous les citoyens. Félicitations. So now we move into the next exciting part of the evening, which is the question period. Everyone's allowed to ask uh, one question with a supplementary question. It's not supposed to be more, more than three minutes in council's question period. It's supposed to be 30 minutes, so I'll do my best for everyone, as I know this is going to be a long evening. The first question goes to Jonathan Goldman. Hi. Welcome. I am the uh, chairman of the dog uh, committee, and uh, I just wanted to express uh, thanks and support for uh, reviewing the bylaw tonight uh, in regards to the changes, both to the pet overall to the within the bylaw, as well as specific to parks. Thank you for coming. Yes, it's on the agenda for tonight, and we're we're all excited. Should be, hopefully we're going to improve the quality of life for our dogs and dog owners. And now we call a Lionel Ross Deitcher. Hello. I was here at last meeting and I asked about the bus stop in front of my house and how it's being used by the STM as a rest stop where they leave their buses mm -hmm. and their motors running for hours and end all throughout the whole day. And you, this community said they're going to undertake to do something about it. So I'd like to know what's been done. Okay, so Councilor Burko has yes. followed up on that. So Go what, ahead. What I told you at the last meeting is that we have a meeting scheduled with the STM. And I believe it's May, uh, at the end of May. And I told you that I would bring it up at that time. There, it's not, you know, something that we don't have direct access yeah. to the STM every day. We're having a special meeting with them, and we'll definitely bring it up at that time. So that meeting is going to be taking place when? I May 29th. It's May 29th. Yeah. May 29th? Yes. Okay. Thank and you. I'll definitely bring it up. I Thank passed you. by your house. I saw it. But, you know, there's, there's, there's only so much they can do. They have to stop somewhere, right? But they can stop on the other side of the we'll, park. I'll definitely And they don't it. have to run their motors all day long. I'll, I'll definitely raise it, and Charles Senecal is in the back, and he's in contact with the STM. And if you don't mind giving him your address so that we, it's Ooh. on record, there he is. You can give him your address and explain to him exactly where it is. I know where it is. Thank you. Well, Thank I, you. I, I do have his address. We have all the addresses on this piece of paper. Perfect. The only reason why I don't read out addresses in public uh, when is because it's on tape, and, but we have all the addresses. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Isabel Pinsky. Welcome. I'm very concerned about Mackle and Armstrong of the traffic, and I asked for a speed bump or a flashing stop sign. We're always crossing over, and the people aren't stopping at the stop signs. Okay. Okay, so uh, I will refer that to the traffic committee. I don't know, have you made a form formal request before tonight, or this is the request? This is the request. Okay, so make uh, an action item for the traffic committee to look at the corner of Mackle and Armstrong. Sean Errat, I think it's, if I'm pronouncing it correct, is it? Errat? Welcome. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, 
approximately five years ago in this setting, the BSR Construction Company presented their plan for the Park Haven Complex. Uh, a number of residents on Trinity Avenue, I happen to live on the last house on Trinity Avenue, and during this meeting, the presentation showed that the entrance to the underground parking for the condo complex was behind my house. During that meeting, we discussed it being moved to Park Haven. Everyone in the room agreed to it, BSR, the architect, the council, and what has happened is that currently the project, which is it just poured its foundation. So I haven't questioned anything because when, I, when it was mentioned that the, the council would accept the entrance on Park Haven, there was no need for me to question. However, there was a rumor in 2013 that said it was going to be moved back to Trinity Avenue. I sent an email in to Mr. Nashen, and he confirmed to me in a written email that no, it's still on Park Haven. Today, actually in the winter of last year, they started pouring the footings for this building. Over the winter time, they poured the foundation. A couple weeks ago, I noticed uh, since we were able to get by all the snow that was piling up beside my house because they were dumping it there uh, from the pit onto Trinity Avenue, so there was no way of even getting to Park Haven. So when the snow cleared, I happened to walk by the project and noticed that the entrance to the underground parking lot for the high-rise is now located behind my house. I went and spoke to the engineering department today and urban planning, asking if the initial plan for the complex was ever changed, and I was told no. So our urban planning department uh, confirmed that it's supposed to be on Park Haven? No, they said to me that the original plan showed it being on Trinity Avenue and that it was never changed. Well, I'll have to check that out with our director of urban planning, uh, and we can get back to you tomorrow, because I'll have to find out what's happening in that file. I'm not up to speed. Do you, you're, uh, do you know? No? I'm very, so we'll, we'll, we'll I'm speak very to urban pleased planning. to see that the old mayor is here. He attended that meeting, and prior to this meeting, we spoke about it, and he's very well aware of what took place during that meeting. Well, it's good. It's good. I have a good relationship and friendship with Anthony, so I can always call him if I wasn't at the meeting. Right. So it's good I know. So, the, I have But other, I will follow up with urban planning tomorrow. Okay, and there's other the concerns answer. with the construction company. I've, I've emailed with a copy to you and other people 10 concerns that I have, uh, and I would appreciate... I understand that not all of them will be taken care of, mm -hmm. but the biggest concern I have right now is that I know it's not sure. going to change, but I don't understand. Well, I don't know if it's not going to change. I'm going to have to get confirmation tomorrow on what happened with respect to that entrance. Okay. okay. So I'll expect someone to get back to me. I mean, yes. it's not, like uh, I said, Senate... it's not going to change, but it's Director... quite disturbing that it, it's there. Yeah. Director Senecal is in the room, so he's hearing what you're saying as well, and we're putting it as a directive that we have a follow-up tomorrow on this issue that we should find out with respect to the parking. And I know that Councillor Torgman has also received copies of your email, right. and we're going to be following and up I on the And I also submitted with that email a copy of Mr. Nashen's email. So I'd appreciate it if it could be looked into. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Okay, Mike D'Alexandre. Alessandro. Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you. I uh, also, it's about the BSR construction. I understand that before there were three partners, now there's only one, and things are changed. They're doing damage, but they don't repair. Before they used to repair the damage. How come they don't repair? Right. Listen, we are doing everything that we can in the city. We, as a matter of fact, we, um, 
We took uh, certain legal proceedings and we had a settlement out of court with uh, their lawyer with respect to that project, with undertakings that are clearly specified, and we're following up with the developer to make sure that he follows all the laws and all the rules that have to be followed. But he's still doing the damage. Well, it just happened last week that we moved uh, forward on it. And the other thing is, uh, I understand if you put a shed in your backyard, you have to keep a meter from your neighbor, right? The bylaw says. How come he was able to come right on the line of our property? Did you people give that permission? Well, I don't have the plans in front of me, but I know that, uh, I mean, I can verify with urban planning and we'd be happy to provide you with all those details, but it, he has to follow the rules and, and well, the, the setbacks rules, that must, were Somebody that were must give him the permission to Well, of go course, by. either he's following what it was approved or he's not, but we're having inspections and following up on it. But we, he had certain approvals based on our setbacks and but what was approved in council. Do you have inspectors to inspect that yes. once in a while? Yes, more than once in a while on that yeah. project. And the other thing, there's three hydro poles that where they were digging, they're leaning now. The wires, they're touching my neighbor's uh, uh, clothesline pole. It's a steel clothesline pole. And I spoke to a, one of your uh, supervisors, came, uh, inspector came around about a week and a half ago. He says, I'm gonna look after that. Nothing has been done. Okay. If those wires, they're going, to, they're going to rub and the rubber gets up. It's going to create a big problem back there. Right. Well, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Jonathan, Jonathan you take note of that, particularly of the wires, and that the uh, further inspections have to continue and be enforced. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Eyal Gamlial. Welcome. Good evening, Council. Thank you for accepting me tonight for asking questions. Um, I live um, in the Meadows Complex, the townhouses right here on Kildare. Um, a couple of nights ago, we had a meeting uh, with Hydro-Quebec um, here in this room. A uh, couple of questions. They're looking at rebuilding their underground canals and upgrading the entire power grid in this sector. Thing is, we only had 72 hours, well, on, technically, we had 72 hours, but we had 24 hours to get the information and to kind of read through all the, the text. Now, as a condo association, we kind of declined giving them servitude on our land uh, because there was no clear-cut information in terms of liabilities, guarantees. You know, we all know how construction companies or Hydro-Quebec will work. We give them the okay. They do whatever they want, and then we have to fix the damages. So we already have mud, uh, mud ground in that in in the meadows in that area of Cote Saint Luc. We already have foundation issues from the past. Now we're worried about what's going on. For now, the project is on ice, but as much as it's on ice, they still have the ability to come behind us and ask the city for permits to do whatever work they want to do with the servitudes they already have from the past. So the, my question is, <coughs> can the city maybe help us out, get involved, answer some questions, maybe meet us, Certainly. so we can kind of really get the gist of what's going on, because we're not all lawyers, and yeah. we can't, you know, we read through the text, and we're, the first sentence says, you're being presented with a draft, but the final, the final plan is what we're gonna follow, we don't know what to do. So well, they came, they spoke to us. Our, sta very... our staff person on that file and our, and our, our uh, representative with Hydro-Quebec is a lawyer. It's our director of legal. <coughs> it's you now, but you work with Jonathan on Hydro or not at all? Well, Jonathan can help if there's any legal questions. But our city manager, that's our CEO, the top person in the city, is uh, working with Hydro on this project. And if you want to meet to go over anything, you or your condo association will be happy to do that. We'd love to, just yeah. because we have, a, we have about a... 120 plus units for sure and the the concern was that they're going to build up to our property line and then after that if we want to connect ourselves there we have to pay over a six to eight thousand we'll meet we'll meet offline on that and we can meet with the city manager i'll be happy to be in attendance as well what do you have something you'd like to add Jeff? okay go ahead Well, the mic 
there's a lot of fear and misconception that, that's going on that, that you guys were given a few minutes notice. They did have a meeting with the condo association a week and a half before you guys got informed a little later from your own association. But surely we can, we can discuss with you because I'm intimately knowledgeable of this file. It, it's not quite what you're talking about at all. Um, I, you, I, I know the whole story. I know why there's the fears, but I'll be happy to meet with you. I'm glad you came to the meeting. And as I said, Tanya Brownovich is our city manager, so she is like the, the top executive position of uh, staff. So she'll meet with you directly, and, and anybody else from the condo association will try to make this work in a positive way. That'd be great. Thank you Thank so you. much. Okay. The next person is Karina Markovitz Katz. Welcome. Hi, good evening. Um, I've had this ongoing issue for well over five years. I live on Greenwood. Uh, my next door neighbor has two indoor and two outdoor spots, and they have three car street parking. They have four cars. My issue only comes <coughs> down to snow removal and safety. I have documentation with David's predecessor as well as head of public security going back to February 13. This, I have pictures to back all this up. The city has had to come back to clean my sidewalk, my the front of my driveway so I can get out. So your, your question is, do they have more parking permits than should be allowed according to our laws? That's number one. And number two, uh, I'm paying for snow removal and I'm paying for safety, which I'm not getting. And it's been going on for well over five years. We'll be able to provide all the documentation you need. And I'd like to know how we're going to go about resolving it once and for all. Finally. But have you been provided with any response as to whether your neighbor is receiving permits according to our bylaws, respecting the laws or not? Have you received a response to that? Well, I've had responses that the sidewalk is, uh, the, the driveway is angled, which it's not. It's the same flat driveway as I have. Also, that they couldn't use one, but David has confirmed to me that there are four legitimate parking Car spots. Okay. There are four legitimate cars, and there are three and there's three street parking. Now, whether they park on the other side of the street where there are no... Uh, so do they have a total of four cars or seven cars? They have four cars, four cars? but they don't want a jockey. This okay. is what it comes to. All right, well, so we'll Whatever. check the bylaw. All, we'll all I care about is that I'm not getting snow removal, and I've called the city back. I have documentation. I have pictures of all this. The city has had to come back to clear. Now, I want this resolved. I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to wait. Part of my taxes go to snow removal, and that's what I want it to go to. So I'd like a definitive answer from... So well, the directive, um, uh, public Mikhail, is that and for public security to do a verification that the particular address, and you don't have to present it in public, but privately if you could give her that address, has the, not, not her address, but the address no, no, of her David, neighbor. No, no, David, David is aware. Councillor, Councillor Torgman has that information that if that address has the uh, appropriate number of on-street parking permits based on our bylaw. And if, okay, not, and, issue, and if not, and if not, then we'll act accordingly. But of course, we treat all citizens equally. Well, so, okay. okay, so it hasn't been going on. So my issue is, I don't really care that they, I mean, uh, really, that they have extra permits. It's that instead of parking across the street where they would be blocking no driveways, which I requested as a reasonable alternative, they park smack in front of my house so that the snow plows have to go around. Okay. Well, first, the, the first thing we can do is we'll verify if they have the right amounts of on-street parking permits. And the second thing we'll do is we'll ask Councillor Torgerman if he can be a mediator if the need arises to make the situation better for you and your neighbors. Excellent. Thank you, thank you so and much for coming. when can I expect a reply? Oh, you, you can call us in the next couple of days. We should have that answer. No, like uh, in a week, two weeks? Uh, just email me and Councillor Torchman. We'll, we'll stay on touch. Excellent. Thank Thanks you so a lot. much. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, now it's Moish Ng Burke. Moisha. Moisha, welcome. <coughs> Moisha Ingber. Uh, I came uh, 
I just retired about a year ago. I'm a coach and Duke resident for about 50 years. Great. I'm an avid sports man. I play tennis, I play t t pickleball, I play uh, everywhere. Now, we created a pickleball game about a year ago at the Aqua Center. We started about four people. Today, we are about 25. When we started, it was a free access to the game. Suddenly, a month and a half ago, we received letters that from now on, if I want to play, they're going to charge us $40 for once a week. I used to play three times a week free. Now they want to charge us $40 to play once a week. I play with my wife. We are retired. I live on a budget. That means it has to cost me $120 for me and $120 for my wife for three months only to play. That's $240. If I want to continue the year, I'm going to get to about almost $800 I should play pickleball. I have a fun card, which I pay for at $85 a year. I can use that to play tennis for free, skating for free, uh, swimming for free. Why would I pay almost $800 to play here a pickleball game? 60% of the people who play, they are not even Coach and Duke residents. If they want to come here from Montreal West, from Westmount, from uh, all over to play in Coach and Luke, they, should, they can pay. I, as a resident, and I, own a, I pay a, re, a card also, I should pay to play this game $800 or $700 a year. It's completely ridiculous. So I cannot play now. I used to play three times a week. Now I'm not allowed to play. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you on your retirement. Thank you for living here for 50 years. And I want you to do sports and be healthy. So we'll find a solution. We will have a meeting with the director of Parks and Recreation, I think it's who's Mr. in the Howard room. Kami, right? I, Kami, Mr. Kami is the, the I don't director. know. He, he might be in charge, but we have the director. I think he is in charge. We have the director. Of, we have the director of Parks and Recreation in the room. Not Mr. Kami. He's not here today. The director is here today. She will take note. And I spoke to uh, Steve Goodman, who's also here today. Thank you for coming, Steve. Same question before the meeting, and I told him, as I'm telling you now, that we'll meet with the Parks and Recreation director to see what solutions we could find. Because we certainly want you to enjoy pickleball, and we don't want you to be spending a lot of money of your, you know, I your think, retirement. I think Coach and Luke does not need my, uh, I pay my taxes to get a little bit of... We'll, we'll find solutions that and, will work for you. And in, I have a letter in NDG, if I want to play or Town of Montreal, it's free. Okay, I don't, uh, that's, that's great, but I, uh, okay. That's good, that's good. It's free, not as good. No, I mean, it's good, it's great. Careful, careful, careful. No, I'd love you to be able to play for free here too. We'll see if that's no. possible. <laughs> I don't think that it would come to $800. That's probably it is, it per is. person for one person? For, for two people. For, a pickleball game is two people yeah, and it costs. They charge you both. If you need okay. any anyway, any I, I, mathematics, it's $40 once a week. Three times a week, it's 120 okay. And 120 for my wife is 40 for three months. Okay, well, it's I, ridiculous. I have a tax credit in Portland. Why would I pay for this? And I buy a fun card on top of this. Okay. So we will find solutions. I'm not sure of all the answers, but, sure, but no, I'm not. I would like to enjoy the, uh, uh, the of And I already the said that, I, and free. I think I already said that I'm going to meet with you personally with the director of with Parks you. and Recreation. Yes. You talk to me? Just now. Oh, just now? But you still want to talk? No, but... Please sit down. Thank you. And Stephen wants to... Stephen, I'll meet with you too. Stephen wants to... <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> I, I Stephen, love Stephen. Stephen wants oh, that Stephen. Oh, that you too. Stephen. See, this Stephen wants to talk to that Stephen. Go ahead, Stephen. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, is my microphone on? Yeah. If, if I may, I'm just looking at uh, a document from our council package for tonight. Uh, and what I understand from reading this, although the director can clarify it, for drop in pickleball, it's free for those with a Coats and Luke fund card. Uh, that is what, th this is what I understand. Now, there's also a league where there's a fee no. to join the league, but if you, if you have, want to do the drop-in, according to the report, it is free for those residents with a fund card. Well, the problem with that is, if you haven't had a fund card before, and I've never had cause to have a fund card, that is rescinded if you want to buy a fund card to play pickleball. And I play three times a week. I spend $120, less 15% because I'm playing three times a week. However, 
I want to play drop-in, it's an additional $6. So today I pay an additional $6, and if you take that and you multiply six by the amount of weeks we have, it's more than the $40. So the gentleman has an incredibly valid point. There are people in our community who cannot afford to do that and were active and are not, not playing and are not, not active because they cannot afford the, the cost. And it is extremely exorbitant. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay. It's, 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 we'll, we'll meet and we'll talk about it. We'll figure this one out. It's, it does sound a little expensive for a couple of people to play pickleball. Okay, Iona Hassoun. Welcome. Um, I live, I've been living in Cote Lou for 51 years. I live on Hudson Avenue. And the back of my house is the Adar Bakery, who's been there for about 11 or 12 years. For the second time, not the first time, for the second time, a car has driven through the fence and into my house. Last time, the car drove through the basement window and was hanging in my basement. On Sunday, I was working in my garden, trying to keep my garden clean. And I was kneeling down and I decided, you know what, I'm going to work. I'm going to do the whole row here. Along the fence, I have to keep it clean. I have to get started on my garden. I'm going to go in and have a cup of coffee before I get started, and then I'm going to work through the morning. Not two minutes after I walked inside my house, another car drove through the fence and just barely I, the, the whole fence fell on, fell down and just barely missed me. Something has to be done. It's a safety issue, and I realize that uh, Adar is a private property but something has to be put in the back there, something more solid, because obviously the fence well, you, you know we're in too expensive. We're in communication about this. I'm totally up to speed on it. Now everybody else is too. Um, and we're looking into what we can do. You have to do something because I'm petrified to go in my yard. I can't even sit in my yard. I understand. And that, that, that parking lot is a zoo. It's terrible. Obviously. It's terrible. Something yeah. has to be done. Please do something because Thank you. I'm scared. I rightfully so. Wow. Okay, so if there's no further questions, we're going to move to the next item on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of um, April 9th at 7.50, April 9th at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Might have been another question. I'm not sure so, you submitted that. But it, so you didn't, you didn't hand it in. <laughs> what? Yeah? Did you submit it? How did I? What's your name? Let's see. I'll believe you anyway. <laughs> No, it's here. Patrick Cannon. Patrick Cannon. <laughs> Hi, thank you for <coughs> y'all. So, um, streets, uh, I live on Ma MacLear. On my street alone, I have about four houses that are for sale and most likely going to be new families, young families coming in. Um, my neighbor across the street moved out. That was a uh, World War veteran was also, uh, and instead it came a family of uh, three young children with uh, three little kids plus my own little children. And um, there is an issue with the speed that I've been complaining to the city for about a year, where people coming from wealth, they want to jump the light that is right in front of the school, and they just turn around and just speed the hell out of it on the uh, my clear. I've asked for bollards, I asked for speed bumps, I asked for the, those, uh, the one that you have near the hospital there, that when you go over 40, it flashes uh, and, you know, so people can slow down. Um, last week, my neighbor's kid almost got hit by a car, speeding out of wealth. Um, so we had to kind of break the law and put our bins in the middle of the street over this weekend so cars would not speed up like crazy. And the funniest thing is that people will pass by with a sense of entitlement and say, what the hell are you doing, <laughs> right? When the city they did, you guys did make something which was useless. You put two bollards right in the middle of McLear, which doesn't really solve anything. What I have suggested, uh, what I've uh, communicated with the previous, uh, with Alan Levine before uh, Mitch uh, took over, was to put a stop sign on Mac, to put a stop sign on Guelph and my clear, 
and yes, with speed bumps on that clear as well as bollards. We have a lot of young kids. Kids are not supposed to play on the street, <coughs> but the kids play on our front yards with balls, the ball runs. You have five-year-olds, you have eight-year-olds, so long as we, we're there looking all the time. But there's not really a way to, you know, we, we don't want to wait until a tragedy happens for the city to take uh, notice. And uh, if it's a $30 fine for putting the bin on the street, it's a, very, it's a very cheap price to pay so people would slow down. Crazies. Because, again, and I feel like, uh, like those old men who stay in the yard say, get out of my yard, but with speed. No, right. Because people come speeding, and I said, hey, nuts, it's 40, it's 40 kilometers. It's not 60, 80, and I've seen it and over and over. Thank you for coming, and we're going to make a note that the traffic committee has to look at the corner of McClear and Guelph. And something better than we're taking traffic calming measures in studying that before the summer actually starts, because they put the bollards closed by the end of July or August, and this didn't really work. It's and still, Councilor still George, speeding. you take note also, because Councilor Georgeman heads the traffic committee. Great. And um, Councilor Kajaski. Your district. Oh yeah, I bother him all the time about that. Very good. So yeah. we have to see what we can do. But Great. we want the safety and security of the kids and everyone yes. in our community. And it, it shouldn't be expensive. Those uh, those flashing uh, those flashing uh, speed signs, they're not expensive. They're not expensive. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So now no further questions. I'd ask for item number two, which is the approval of the minutes of the special meeting of April 9th. Uh, Councilor Kovac seconded by. Councilor Sabak, all in favor? Okay. Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. Move to the minutes of April 9th at 8 p.m. Moved by? With amendments. The amendments moved by Councilor Kovac. Thank you. Seconded by Councilor Sabak. Councilor Cohen, any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. And now the special meeting of April 30th at 7.30 p.m. Moved by Councilor Kovac, seconded by Councilor Sabag. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? In your favor, Councilor Kovac? Thank you. So that's carried. And now we have any business arising from the previous council minutes. And now the departmental reports moved by Councilor Kovac, seconded by Councilor Sabag. Any discussion? Councilor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Uh, are we on? Yes. Uh, first of all, a great big thank you to all the volunteers and all the donors who came out to the blood donor clinic this past week. Uh, a shout out to um, our associate uh, in the communications department, Regine Banon, who really took uh, the lion's share of the organization, and it's my thanks to her for making it a success. And to the VCOPs, who have become an integral fabric of the uh, annual day because they are the chief volunteers on site. So my huge thanks to them. In Parks and Recreation, just to give you an update on what's happening in Pierre Elliott Trudeau Park this summer, um, there are still upgrades that are going to be done for 2018, which are the electrical control panels, uh, lighting for the baseball fields and outdoor rink, installation of shade structures, which is coming for the playgrounds. Be patient, it won't happen overnight, but they are coming. Uh, replacement of the baseball field scoreboard. So for all the baseball players, look forward to that. Uh, we're also going to be doing some additional fencing around the playground area. We listen to the, com to the concerns of the parents. And uh, an installation of entrance gates and some better signage throughout the park. And please also take note of special events that are coming up. Uh, the annual garage sale, which uh, seems to be quite a success, will be taking place Sunday, May the 27th. I'm sure you all know Canada Day is a huge event for us. Make sure to come. And um, our day camp has gone digitally. Day camp is on its way to becoming digital. I'll just read you what she said. iPads have been purchased for the park leaders. This will facilitate the submission of all administrative documents. iPads will have access to our registration program, and park leaders will have quicker access to all registration information. This will ensure less paper, so for you guys who are always encouraging us to use less paper, throughout the week, eight-week session, this is a huge um, advantage also for the parents and for the counselors who are looking after your kids. Um, our teen lounge is active again this summer. Our men's club is beyond being active. And um, just to take note also that the annual maintenance program for the arena, we shut it down May the 18th to June 23rd. This goes on every year. 
I also welcome you to please come and buy tickets for Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoats Gala, which takes place May the 30th, and um, I'll let Mitch fill you in afterwards on more information. There's also a Heart Saver AED course. I really recommend that everyone learn CPR, or the advanced um, uh, life-saving techniques. June the 10th, it's given at the Aquatic and Community Center. You can save a life. You should know this for, your, for yourself and for your family. And um, take a look at, see what's happening in the, in the recreation department. It's beyond pickleball. There's a thousand things going on. I invite you to come and participate. <laughs> no, no, we charge for, we have to pay for the building. We have to keep the lights on. <laughs> There's a second question for you at the end. All right. Any for anybody else? Councilor Coe. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I uh, just want to note that uh, for District 2, the District 2 Town Hall meeting that I've been having every year for the past 13 will be on Monday, June 4th at 7.30 here at Council. And my special guest will be Marie Christine Nobert from the uh, Police Station 9. We'll also have the, uh, one of the developers from the Equinox, Mark Chagall. I know a lot of the residents on Mark Chagall have been anxious to ask questions, uh, including our, our MP, and uh, they'll have the opportunity to come and ask questions that night. Uh, uh, thanks to members of the Dog Owners Committee who are here tonight. We've been meeting since January. Uh, later, uh, later on in the agenda, we'll, I'll be giving notice of motion for the uh, new dogs bylaw. And uh, I want to commend Jonathan uh, and the others in the room who have really worked hard and have uh, shown a lot of, uh, a lot of interest in, in the new initiative. And certainly the, the CSL Central Bark Facebook page, which has now exceeded 200 people already, and it's become a fantastic discussion group for, for dog owners and so on and so forth. I also want to thank my colleagues, Councillors Sabag and uh, Kujavsky, who are dog owners as well, for their support uh, on our initiative. Um, and uh, the, uh, just want to let you know that uh, the Cote St. Luke will be uh, introducing a brand new city newsletter. Um, we had the Cote St. Luke uh, uh, capsule for many years, and um, uh, we had it in a newspaper format, in magazine format. Uh, it's going to be called uh, CSL Inside Out. It's going to be uh, it's going to have a new focus. Uh, uh, transforming it more into a residence guide with basic information the city needs residents to know. It's going to be printed very soon, so coming to your door and there should be a lot of good information. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cohen. Councillor Torchman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the uh, the Cote Saint Luke Library is a jewel of Cote Saint Luke, uh, and I'm very proud to say that there's a 15% increase in membership this, uh, this month. Um, it's, a, it's a great resource. There's fantastic, um, not only books, but there's e-books e uh, as well as Press Reader, which gives you access to thousands of uh, journals from around the world uh, in various languages. Um, we just recently had our book sale uh, where we're through volunteer support, and we appreciate all the volunteers in Cote St. Luke. Um, it made a significant amount of, of money through this book sale. And that is funding things like the iPad Lending Center that the uh, library will be uh, launching at the end of this month or beginning of June. Um, so we have iPads that could be lent, lent out in the, in the library. Um, it's a great resource. I, I urge you to visit uh, the Cote Saint Luke Library. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Torchman. Councillor Sabat. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just uh, I don't have any uh, key metrics to share with you today. However, I did want to mention a couple of points. Our uh, emergency medical services has started a new class with 10 new students. They will be uh, on the road making sure that we uh, respond to any emergency uh, by next month. We also had a brainstorming session for our VCOPs. Uh, great turnout, some of you may have been there, where we looked at every single aspect of VCOP and making sure that we continue uh, to have this wonderful and sustainable service for our volunteers. Thank you, Councilor Sabag. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on the finance side, uh, the city has been very busy preparing the audited financial statements, which I'll talk about a bit later in the evening. Uh, I wanted to remind residents also that the second installment for their city taxes is due on June 21st. Mm -hmm. um, on, the, on the environmental front, I want to mention that on Thursday, or this Thursday, I should say, May 17th, from 2 to 8, the city will be giving out free compost to residents and also free tomato plants. Uh, so free combos for everyone. Tomato plants are first come, first serve, so if you get there early, 
you'll get a tomato plant and you can plant it in your garden and, and uh, produce tomatoes for many years to come. And uh, residents are encouraged to bring, if they have a, a bucket, they can bring it, it makes it easier. Uh, if not, there'll be some compostable bags that you can uh, put the compost in. Uh, on two items related to uh, District 4, I wanted to mention uh, that I apologize for the delay with the traffic lights at Coates Inlet Road in Sunnybrook. The controller has been out for a few weeks now. Uh, we had to go to tender because the price was quite expensive to get a, small, a few bids for a new controller. And now we're just waiting for it to be for it to be delivered, installed, and set up. So that should be in as soon as possible. And with regard to the Nature Path dog run, there's still a few items left, but they should be completed, uh, including the lighting, uh, and they should be completed by the end of this month. So I and at that point, the Nature Path dog run will be virtually done. Just uh, some signage issues that'll be completed a bit later in the summer. Thank you, Thank you. Councillor Lee. Anyone else, Councillor? Burku and then Councillor Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I just want to mention two projects that I was involved with uh, over the past month. Um, on April 23rd, we um, applied for the Smart City Challenge, and uh, we may or may not get it. Uh, however, one uh, positive um, uh, impact was that uh, a lot of residents got together. We um, contacted some uh, um, tech companies that uh, are working in the field uh, that we're looking at uh, sensors and um, I, I think it was a positive step in uh, in just you know brainstorming and seeing what we can do and the challenge that we presented the proposal that we presented is basically to address the issue of uh, social isolation among seniors by um, making their homes smarter and allowing uh, the city to, to monitor and to track uh, what's going on with seniors and having uh, our services available to them in a more uh, interactive way. Um, the second thing is um, the uh, historic walk that we did. Uh, Orrin Sabag and I went uh, on a walking tour of McDonald. Why is McDonald in Cote St. Luke? <laughs> and uh, it was uh, called The Tale of Three Cities. We were very lucky to have uh, Norman uh, Spatz uh, give the tour. And uh, it really uh, gave a very nice explanation of uh, the reasons why McDonald is there. Um, because historically, uh, the developer of Hampstead, a uh, fellow by the name of Holt, you, you all remember her, Holt Renfrew, well, he was a, a an initial uh, founding uh, father of, of that company and the Montreal Light and Heat Company. Anyway, he bought most of Hampstead from uh, Coates and Lucan and DG. But based and to develop it as a garden city, but he didn't want McDonald because there were two or three apartment buildings there, so he just left it, and that's why McDonald is squeezed in between Hampstead and uh, and Montreal. But all of that to say that it's fascinating that uh, we we do these uh, historic walking tours and uh, look forward to other uh, many more residents coming uh, and being part of the historical society. It's. Uh, you know, um, run by uh, Janine, and uh, we look forward to having another walking tour, perhaps either in north of Hampstead or in the western sector of the city. But every year we give the walking tours, and it's always very interesting. Thank you. Very nice, Councillor Kajas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so just further to what uh, Councillor Kovac mentioned earlier about uh, our uh, little theater production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoats coming up, uh, opening on May 30th. I see the mayor's wife is very excited. Uh, so May 30th is our opening. We have, for the first time, a gala fundraiser opening. So we're raising money, uh, not only for the improvement and the future of our theater, but also to send local school children to go see the show. And I can proudly say and confirm that we're sending over 200 local elementary school kids from grades two through six to go see the show on, on the days that we've allocated to just children. We're actually filling one show with just Merton School. So Merton School will be picking up the entire theater with 10 of their teachers to, uh, to go see Joseph. Uh, so we're very, very excited. The general show run opens then on, May, on June 2nd on Saturday night, which I believe is three tickets short of being sold out. Uh, so get your tickets quickly uh, because, uh, because they're moving off the shelves, off the uh, internet shelf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, to add on, uh, ticket sales are going extremely well for Joseph. The first Saturday night's almost sold out. The last time we looked, there was like five tickets left. 
uh, over 50% of the tickets have been sell, sold for the run, so we extended it. It was supposed to go to June 10th. It's now been extended to go to June 17th. Good. And um, the gala that is taking place on the 30th, Wednesday, May 30th, is $150. And basically what I'm telling people is it's two shows and a kosher cocktail de natoir. It's sponsored by Blossom Caterer. And, um, during, and it's going to take place in the council chamber. And during the uh, cocktail de natoir, there will be performances from some of the stars, your favorite stars from the past, like Brandon Schwartz from Catch Me If You Can, and Michael Molino and myself from Hairspray Singing Timeless to Me, and a whole bunch of other better stars than, than me <laughs> that are going to obviously be on, on this little stage performing to you. And then we go down at 8 o'clock, that's at 6, and at 8 o'clock we don't go down to see the preview performance of Joseph, which is really spectacular. The voices, the dance, the, 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 the choreography, it's... It's really a spectacular show. I encourage it for people of all ages. The cast mm -hmm. is from 8 till 80. We have a kids choir in it. We have seniors in it. It's really real community theater with, with people of all ages and a lot of amazing talent. So you can buy your tickets online at Showtex. You just go to Cote St. Louis, CSLDramaticSociety.com. You can buy your tickets for the gala. You can buy your tickets for the show. The other thing I want to say, a mention is uh, two things about other departments. Uh, in terms of public works, um, there will be Public Works Week next week and Education Day on May 22nd, where Jewish People School will be visiting Public Works. There will be a truck museum and a tour on May 23rd is Employee Appreciation Day. I also want to note that all our parks are open, the water's running, the swings are up, we're cutting the grass throughout. And we've received over 200 requests for grass repairs in April, which is normal after our snow removal season. And uh, upwards of 300 more uh, have come in this month. And we're working as fast as we can to repair your lawns so that everybody can have beautiful green lawns and then plant beautiful flowers. I also want to mention in the library recently, we extended the hours of operation on Saturdays. And um, it's the season for students and others, certainly, to use the library. On May the 5th, we had 45 people at 6.30 and 33 people uh, all the way past 8.30. And on May the 12th, we had 45 people at 6.30, 50 at 7.30, and 41 at 8.30. So that's a lot of people in the library on a Saturday night. And I'm really glad to have uh, reintroduced that service with the support of council. And uh, that's basically what we have to report. Hope everybody is enjoying the good weather, and we will move on to item number four, which is the Eleanor London Coaching the Public Library, 5A Councillor Torgeville. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Where's Whereas on February 12, 2018, by resolution number 180211, the City of Coat St. Luke Council authorized the library director to request a grant for financial aid from the Quebec Minister of Culture and Communications for the realization of a project called Collection Development for the financial period of 2018-2019, whereas a resolution is required to confirm the city's commitment to finance the project. That the city council hereby commit to finance the acquisition of documents for a proposed budget of $314,465 for the 2018 year, including the amount corresponding to the Quebec government grant to be received. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Torgman, seconded by Councillor Sabat. Any discussion, Councillor Torgman? Um, this is a, a grant application that the city does on a yearly basis. We receive approximately $70,000 a year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, uh, but we need to declare what our budget is for that this coming year. Uh, uh, so that I, we can reflect it and then get the uh, apply for the grant. Thank you, Councilor Torgman. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item 6A. Councilor Hurdle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hereby give notice a motion that bylaw 2511 to be entitled bylaw concerning various facility upgrades for Kerwin and Trudeau Parks and the application of the sum of 314000 556 <coughs> taken from the available balances of bylaws 2289, 2305, 2306, 2325, 35, 59, 60, 61, 78, 83, 87, 24, 28, 24, 29, 24, 30, 31, 35, 49, 60, and 61 in view of financing an expense of 314,000 will be presented at a later meeting for adoption. 
and we'll table the draft bylaw. We'll table and give notice of motion. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Erdling. And then we move to item 6B, Councillor oh, So just if I may mention briefly. Briefly. So this is a way we finance projects. Uh, so when we borrowed money in the past for other, uh, for other capital projects or capital works, and we haven't necessarily spent all the money, uh, this is an excellent way to avoid having to borrow again. And it's from a range of bylaws from as little as 12 cents to as much as 135,000. And this is one of the acts that our treasurer, Angela Marino, has worked very hard on finding money that's uh, left over in some of these old outstanding bylaws. Thank you, Councillor Erdl. Do you give a notice of motion yep. and table it? Okay, so now 6B, Councillor Erdl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I hereby give notice of motion that bylaw 2512 to be entitled bylaw concerning road resurfacing at various locations within the territory of Cote St. Luke and the application of the sum of 840,000 taken from available balances on bylaws 2290, 2307, 2317, 2333, and 2428 in view of financing and expense of 840,000 will be presented at a later meeting for adoption. Thank you, Councillor Erdl. And I filed the draft bylaw as well. Filed it, thank you. So now we move to 6C, uh, Councillor Erdl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, be it resolved that Cote St. City Council approves the attached list of disbursements for the period of April 1st, 2018 to April 30th, 2018 for a total amount of $4,883,000. million. $13.31 in Canadian funds and the treasurer certificate number 18 0101, dated May 8, 2018, has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability funds to cover the described expenses. Okay. Moved by Councillor Erdely, seconded by Councillor Kujawski. Any discussion? Councilor so, Erdely. just to mention briefly, uh, normally our disbursements are just over $3 million, so this is a bit higher for a few reasons. The biggest one is we have a roughly $1.2 million uh, bond payment for a loan, uh, for a previous loan that was borrowed. And there's also some payments towards the waterworks that uh, you've probably noticed throughout the city, uh, some of the work being done on the sewer pipes and water pipes and the consulting work for those projects as well. So moved and seconded, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously, we move to item D, Councillor Erdogan. So I hereby, I'm not sure how to do this. Uh, I hereby table the report of the reimbursement of Councillor's research and support expenses. And for the year 2017, uh, there were no expenses that are listed on the document. Thank you, Councillor Erdely. Um, and now we move to item E. So, so for 6E, I hereby file the audited financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2017. And uh, I just want to mention a few of the key highlights. Uh, I should mention this, the audited financial statements will be posted on the city's website tomorrow, uh, as we have done, as we have done last year as well. Uh, so the good news is that the city uh, in the financial year 2017 uh, ended up with an operating surplus of $2,313,400. Uh, where did this money come from? Uh, there's a few key variance, variances that led to this. The biggest one is with regard to the welcome tax. Uh, the city of Cote St. Luke uh, tries to be, of course, conservative uh, in estimating the welcome taxes, which is basically from new properties that are bought and sold. And all properties. All properties. I should say true, all properties bought and sold, not just new properties, that makes sense. Uh, so we had estimated just over $2 million. In the end, it came at over just over $3 million, so uh, a difference of $944,000. Uh, so that is the biggest piece. The second piece, biggest piece was an $800,000 uh, payment as part of the deal negotiated by the, the Association of Suburban Mayors, including Mayor Brownstein. Uh, with the agglomeration where Cote St. Luke received $800,000 uh, in payment in 2017 from the, Agla, from the agglomeration. Uh, there was also, after uh, some new properties that were built, uh, there was also extra taxation of $436,000. And uh, the other big item was a pension overpayment that had been made in previous years of $480,000. 
Uh, on the opposite side, just to share, uh, we had a tough winter, as you may have noticed. And the, the winter, the snow removal expenses were over by about $359,000. And when you sum that all up, those, the key <coughs> items, it, it works out to approximately $2.3 million. So those are the key, uh, the key differences. Obviously, there's several others as well. Uh, but those are the key changes, and that's where we have the $2.3 million. Now, uh, what I would also mention is the, the City of Cote St. Luke has been working hard over the last few years to try to use some of that money from the surpluses to reduce our borrowing and to reduce our debt. Uh, if we look at the long-term debt in the City of Cote St. Luke, if we compare where we were back in 2011, uh, so seven years ago versus where we are today, we reduced the debt by about $11 million in a matter of seven years. Uh, and by using the money from surplus to fund projects and reducing our borrowing, and uh, it basically allows us to pay down our debt quicker and, of course, helps benefit Coates and Lucas in the long term. Uh, so that is one of the ways we've been trying to reduce the long-term debt and, and, of course, continue to fund projects that benefit residents of Coates and Lucas. Uh, and just to mention, again, the financial statements will be posted on the website and I'll share more information uh, at the next council meeting as well. Thank you, Councillor Erdely. So another oh, oh, sorry, I just want to say ahead. thank you again to the entire finance department for their hard work and to our treasurer, again, Treasurer Marino, uh, for working so hard to get the financial statements done and uh, the state of the finances of the city of Cote St. Luke are good, yeah, are very good. Thank you. Well done. on to item 7, which is Human Resources, 7A, Councillor Berkeley. Oh. Okay, be it resolved that Human Resources. Uh, okay, d'accord. Um, bon. Euh, que le préambule, euh, okay. ressources humaines, contrat d'assurance collective, achat regroupé, solution, UMQ, regroupement, agglomération de Montréal. Que le, ce, euh, il est proposé que ce conseil confirme ainsi par les présents son adhésion à la solution UMQ en matière d'assurance collective pour ses employés et ou élus au choix de la municipalité. Que l'adhésion au regroupement solution UMQ sera d'une durée maximale de cinq ans, soit pour la période 2019 à 2024. Que la Ville mandate l'UMQ comme ag pour agir à titre de mandataire pour le représenter au contrat d'assurance collective à octroyer ou déjà octroyé suite à l'application des présentes, ainsi que son renouvellement, de même que pour l'accès à son dossier d'assurance collective auprès de l'assureur dans le respect des règles de protection des renseignements personnels que la Ville s'engage à payer à l'UMQ des frais de gestion de 1,15 des primes totales versées par la Ville durant le contrat et une rémunération de 0,65 des primes totales versées par la municipalité au consultant Mayette Actuaire Inc., dont la Ville joint aussi le mandat obtenu pour le regroupement suite à un appel d'offres public. Que la Ville s'engage à respecter les termes et conditions du contrat à intervenir avec la Société d'assurance à qui le contrat sera octroyé suite à l'application des présentes ainsi que les conditions du mandat du consultant. Que la Ville accepte enfin qu'une municipalité puisse, en cours d'exécution du contrat, se joindre à l'achat regroupé prévu aux présentes ainsi qu'au mandat accessoire des services professionnels du consultant de l'UMQ, mandaté pour œuvrer à l'appel d'offres et au contrat à venir, en attendant que la dite municipalité s'engage à respecter toutes et chacune des conditions prévues au cahier des charges au contrat d'assurance collective à juger en conséquence, ainsi qu'à celle prévue au mandat du consultant. Sorry for the long uh, resolution. It was not drafted by Code Saint Luke. It was drafted by the Union des municipalités du Québec. So, so, so be it so moved and resolved Thank you. that we join the um, collective uh, insurance program of the UMQ. That's basically what it is in a nutshell. We're, we're joining other members of the um, um, cities on the, uh, in the province who are members of the uh, Union des Municipalités du Québec for a bid 
on uh, collective uh, insurance. Moved by Councillor Burke, who is seconded by Councillor Early. Any further discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. And now we move to 7B, Councillor Burke. Okay. Um, oh, okay. This is the one until the May yeah, 18th. Yeah, got it. So, be it resolved that City Continental Council approves the appointment of Annabelle et no plans as a junior human resources advisor contract management position for a fixed term period effective from April 9th, 2018 to May 18th, 2018, and that the treasurer's certificate has been issued attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Berkeley, seconded by Councillor Early. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried, and we move to C. Councillor Kovac. Be it resolved that the Coast St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of Cornelia Kearney as a temporary office agent, white collar auxiliary position, which was effective February 21st, 2018, and that the Treasurer's certi Certificate 18-0095, uh, dated May the 3rd, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move to item 7D, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of Tristan Tongue Fernandez and Maxime Girard Lucci as parks and sports supervisor into management positions, each for fixed term contracts effective from April the 14th, 2018 to October the 28th, 2018, and that the Treasurer's Certificate 18-0089 dated May the 8th, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. And this is for two uh, Parks and Sports Supervisors. Thank you, Councillor Kovac. Seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. And we move to item E, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of Dionysus Copitas as a customer service supervisor for a fixed-term management contract, effective April the 10th, 2018 to April the 12th, 2019, Treasurer's Certificate Number 18-0088, dated May the 8th, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses, and this is for a uh, customer service supervisor. Moved and seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? All in favor? All in favor? Mike? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now Councillor Tordman, 7F. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, be it resolved that the Cote San Luke City Council approves the hiring of Ariane Smalley as a children's coordinator for a fixed term management contract effective from April 9, 2018 to April 5, 2019, that the tre Treasurer's Certificate Number 18 0090, dated May 8, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Thank you, Councillor Tordman. Seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. We move to item 7G, Councillor Kovac. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of the blue collar auxiliary employees whose names are listed on the document entitled Part Time Employees Blue Collar Hiring, dated April the 27th, 2018. Said employees' term of employment will be asked to the conditions of the collective agreement, and that the Treasurer's Certificate 18 0091, dated May the 8th, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? All in favor? No one opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move to item 7H, Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Cote St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of white collar auxiliary employees whose names are listed on the document entitled Part Time Employees White Collar Hiring, dated April the 27th, 2018, and that said employment, employees' term of employment will be asked for the conditions of the collective agreement, 
The Treasurer's Certificate Number 18-0092, dated May the 8th, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. And this is for pedal boat attendants and um, lifeguards at the indoor pool, junior camp counselor, etc. Moved by Councilor Kovacs, seconded by Councilor Cohen. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Get in vote. I'm Carried sorry. unanimously. Now we go to item 7I, Councilor Kovacs. That the so Coast St. Luke City Council approves the hiring of Sarah Michaud as a teen lounge animator for a fixed term management contract effective April the 14th, 2018 to April the 12th, 2019, and that the Treasurer's Certificate 18-0093, dated May the 8th, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, attesting to availability of funds to cover the described expenses. And this is for the teen lounge, and I'm encouraging everyone to send their kids or their teens or tweens to participate. It's a, it's a very good program. Moved by Councilor Kovacs, seconded by Councilor Cohen. Any other discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carry. Now I'm taking a five minute recess before item number 8A. I need uh, everyone to come back for five minutes. This is the council chamber. to item uh, 8A, we're going to defer, defer 8A to the meeting of June, June the 11th. And now I move to item 8B, which is Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to read the whereases. The City of Cote St. Luke annually hosts a Canada Day event, whereas the City applied for a grant from the Government of Canada for this event under Celebrate Canada program, and the grant has been approved, whereas in order to receive the grant, the City has to enter an agreement with the Government of Canada, and whereas before entering into agreement with the Government of Canada, the City needs the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Land Occupancy authorization, be it resolved <coughs> that the Cote St. Luke Council hereby approves the grant agreement and that the Cote St. Luke and that a council hereby require the memo, which is the Minister of the Municipal Affairs, for its authorization to enter into the grant agreement with the Government of Canada and that said resolution shall be accepted for immediate action. Basically, this is to allow us to have the money for Canada Day. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded <coughs> by Councillor Torgman. Any discussion? Excellent. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. We move to item 9A. Councillor Cohen. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I so move that Coatsy Luke City Council hereby approves and authorizes the purchase of a yearly license for G Suite business for a 12-month period and authorizes payment of $24,000 plus applicable taxes. That treasure certificate number 180103, dated May 9, 2018, has been issued by the City Treasurer, testing the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Cohen, seconded by Councillor Torgerman. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Mayor, this is basically uh, our... our uh, plan to maintain our current email calendar system storage and message archiving system in g suite business from google what's important here is that we're able to purchase the annual license fee from a montreal-based authorized google cloud partner therefore we're able to benefit from billing in canadian dollars thank you councillor cohen all in favor anyone opposed carried and now we move to item 10a councillor sabat thank you mr mayor <clears throat> be it resolved that the bylaw entitled Bylaw 2398-2 to modify bylaw 2398 to regulate parking and public safety. Uh, B and his is hereby adopted and numbered 2398-2. Thank you, Councillor Sabag. Seconded by Councillor Kijaski. Thank you. Any discussion? Just uh, a bylaw uh, helping us in terms of, you know, kind of streamlining our parking uh, regulation for public safety. Thank you. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. And we move to item 10B, Council Sabat. Uh, sorry, I'm going right at it. Sorry. B. Yeah. 
Um, tablets. Yes, tablets. thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, be it resolved, whereas the city of uh, Cote St. Luke wishes to purchase six rugged computer and their required accessories for the public safety department, whereas the manufacturer has authorized pricing in line with the Centre Centre des Services Partagés du Québec group tender pricing, even through uh, even though the city is not part of said group tender. Be it resolved. Where is it? Oh, sorry. Be it resolved that the city of Cote Saint Luke hereby awards the contract to Hypertech Group for the purchase of six Panasonic Toughbook CF20 computers plus accessories for an amount not to exceed thirty-one thousand eight hundred dollars plus plus applicable taxes. That the council further authorizes that the aforementioned purchase be changed to uh, working fund to be reimbursed in yearly installments for up to a maximum period of five years. That the treasurer certificate number 18-0062 has been issued uh, by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expense. Moved by Councillor Sebag, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? No, not Okay, yeah, this is just a bunch of uh, computers that are needed for our public safety and they're uh, portable. So on board. On board. On board. Portable on board. Moved and seconded, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously and moved to 10C. Uh, 10C, Councilor Coe. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I wish to give notice a motion that bylaw 2508 to be entitled bylaw to regulate dogs will be presented at, to be presented at a later meeting for adoption. And then I'd like to uh, table it. Table the uh, draft bylaw. I would wish to table the draft bylaw 2508 entitled Bylaw to Regulate Dogs. Thank you, Councilor Cohen. Item 11A, Councilor Kajaski. 11A. Thank you, Mr. No. Mayor. Table. Be it resolved that the City of Cote St. Luke Council hereby awards a contract to Regis Bégin, the sole conforming bidder, for the cutting of grass on vacant lots for the 2018 year in accordance with the terms of tender number C 20 18 20 for a total amount of $21,395 plus applicable taxes. That Council hereby reserves its rights to exercise the 2019 and 2020 option years of the contract. That the City Treasurer has issued Treasurer Certificate Number TC 18 0096, dated May 3rd, 2018, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kajowski, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? That's well, pretty self explanatory. It's for the uh, cutting of grass on vacant lots, and it is down about uh, 7 or 8 percent over the last year, was the removal of the current set Bene Brith House. Or the new neighbor right. Move and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. And now we go to item 11B, Councilor Kajaski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm. Be it resolved that the City of Cote Saint-Luc Council hereby approves and awards a contract for poison ivy and ragweed treatments to Entretien uh, Paysager CTN Inc. for the 2018 year and authorizes payment of $15,158.40 plus applicable taxes that the Treasurer's Certificate Number 18 0102, dated May 8, 2018, has been issued by the City of Cote St. Luke, uh, City of Cote Luke City, City Treasurer, attesting to availability of funds to cover the aforementioned expenses. Moved by Councillor Kajaski, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? I, uh, I'm pleased that we'll be killing all the ragweed because I'm allergic to it. I'm counting on you and Councillor Sabag. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Inclu uh, including Councillor Cohen's in favor of yep. getting rid of the poison ivy uh, and ragweed. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Carried. Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And we move now to item C, uh, which is deferred. And we move it to the next. Uh, See, you know, I heard no. no. We're not deferring that one? No. no. It's the next one. Are we deferring one? No, no, no. We're not deferring that one. No. I thought we were. No. Okay, no. okay. Councilor Kovac, item C, 11 C. Be it resolved that the City of Cote St. Luke Council hereby awards a contract for the purchase of a one wheel loader with detachable snow blower to Nortax Quebec Inc. in accordance with the tender number C 10 18 for a total $408,335 plus applicable taxes, and that described expenses shall be financed from Loan Bylaw 2501, previously approved by the Ministère des Affaires Municipales des Occupations des Territoires 
and that the Treasurer's Certificate TC18-0105 dated May the 9th, 2018 has been issued by the City of Cote St. Luke City Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds for the described expenses. Okay, so moved, seconded by Councillor Kujaski. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Councillor Torchman opposed. Hi, Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead. Um, I'm just uh, just uh, announcing why I'm voting against this one. It's over the uh, proposed uh, budget uh, for this particular piece of equipment. Uh, I think we can do better, and uh, that's my reason for voting against this bylaw. Thank you. Oh, okay. Very good. Can, uh, moving second, all we have the vote with Councillor Torgman dissenting. Now we're moving to item 11D. Councillor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the City of Cote St. Luke Council hereby awards a contract for the purchase of one 10 wheel dump truck to Globocam Montreal Inc. in accordance with the tender number C13 18 <coughs> for a total negotiated amount of $202,328.64 plus applicable taxes, that the described expenses shall be financed from loan bylaw 2501, previously approved by the Ministère des Affaires Municipales et Occupation du Territoire and that the Treasurer Certificate TC18-0104, dated May the 9th, has been issued by the City of Cote St. Luke City Treasurer, attesting to the availability of funds for the described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Jaski. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Councillor Torgman's opposed. Uh, you'd like to, for the same reason? Same reason. For the same reasons? Uh, Is it about it's not about budget. Is it about budget no. or it's because it's one bidder? This one was above budget as well. It's uh, slightly above budget. It's the US dollars. Okay. So uh, carried with Councillor Torgman dissenting. And now we move on to item uh, 12, which is deferred to the council meeting of uh, June 11th, uh, as there was a requirement for it to be translated into French. And now we move on to item 13A, Councillor Kajaski. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that pursuant to the terms of tender number C-02-18, the City of Cote St. Luke City Council hereby awards a contract to Les Entreprises de Construction Ventec Inc., the lowest conforming bidder for up to a maximum of $291,215 plus applicable taxes that furthermore, the City may consider an amount of 10% plus applicable taxes for any potential contingencies and extras if required, that shall first be approved according to the city's procedures, that the described expenses shall be financed from loan bylaw 2498, entitled bylaw 2498, authorizing a loan of $315,000 for the replacement of various sidewalks belonging to the city of Cote St. Luke, approved by the Ministère des Affaires Municipales et Occupation du Territoire, that the city of Cote St. Luke Treasurer has issued treasurer certificate TC18-0098 on May 4th, 2018, attesting to the availability of funds to cover the above described expenses. Moved by Councilor Kajaski, seconded by Councilor Sabag. Any discussion? We're gonna repair those sidewalks. Uh, and it's moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And 13B, Councilor Kajaski. Be it resolved that the City of Cote St. Luke City Council hereby awards a contract for line painting services for the 2018 and 2019 seasons in accordance with the terms of tender number C-03-18 to the lowest conforming bidder, namely Entreprise TRA Inc. for a total amount of $202,035.60 plus applicable taxes that furthermore the City may consider an amount of 10% plus applicable taxes for any potential contingencies and extras if required that shall first be approved according to the city's procedures that the treasurer's certificate number TC18-0100 and dated May 4th, 2018 has been issued by the city of Cote St. Luke's city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the 2018 portion of the above described expenses that a second treasurer certificate shall be issued at the beginning of 2019 year to attest to the availability of funds to cover the 2019 portion of the above described expenses. Moved by Councillor Kajaski, seconded by Councillor Sabag. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, okay, Councillor Berku. No, 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 she can go. Councillor Kovac first, and then Councillor Berku. Lady before lady. Well, she had her hand up first. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, last year I declared that I would never, ever vote for this again, and I will continue to never vote for this again. Do you realize that in five years, in the period of five years, 
This will have been a $1 million worth of money spent to wash away the paint that goes that gets applied not really that well because it's water-based and number two within a couple of months it's completely gone so by the fall or early in the winter we have no lines left anymore. I challenge the Quebec government to put back decent conditions using highway grade paint that will at least last for a period of time that will be reflective and visible to everybody once the snow falls because by the time the snow falls you can't see anything anymore. This is the most egregious waste of funds ever. I cannot in good conscience spend the taxpayers' money $200,000 to wash it, watch it wash away. What is happening in the rest of Canada? What is happening in the United States? Why are we in Quebec so different that we have to wash away our money and throw it down the drain? Never, never, never vote for this. Thank you, Councillor Kovac. Councillor Berger. Yeah, so um, I am uh, deeply committed <laughs> to, <laughs> to having uh, the best uh, safety and security for our uh, motorists and our residents on our streets. And I think it's uh, extremely important to have a good and clean uh, line painting and signage on the streets. For me, it's a major, it's number one priority. I understand Councillor Kovac's point of view that it's uh, not durable. Unfortunately, we're stuck with the regulations and the rules of the Quebec government, so we have to do the best we can. The only thing I do regret is that this line painting doesn't cover the um, paintings in the intersections that we've identified uh, for um, a higher level of pedestrian safety and signage. Uh, and I look forward to seeing this uh, very shortly from our, our engineering department. So uh, I'm going to vote in favor and I'm going to ask also what the deadline is because I don't see any deadline. I don't see any, any kind of time or schedule on this, uh, on this contract. I would hope that uh, it will be done as soon as possible, but um, uh, I'm definitely going to have to vote for it. We have no choice. Councillor Sabag. So although we have no choice, I, I would like to say a couple of words. I know uh, Councillor Kujawski is moving this and I'm seconding this, this one, but uh, in any case, we have a year, uh, Councillor Kovac, for, uh, <laughs> to, to say something about it, uh, not just in council. Uh, so I certainly hope that um, maybe I'll take on uh, this with Mr. Uh, Councillor Kujawski and maybe do something or send some sort of message. Although we have no choice, this is the thing that we have to do and vote on. So um, I, I will second the motion. But uh, I, I do believe we can do a little bit better uh, within the year that we have in front of us to at least uh, at least say something. Did you want? No, Councillor Kovac. Actually, we do have a choice, and we've sat on it for a year because I brought this to the attention to the public over a year ago, and I think it's time for Code Saint Luke to show a little leadership. <coughs> I have no problem doing this in-house, buying our own paint, and challenging the Minister of the, uh, Minister of the Environment and the Minister responsible for highway road and safety. I think that we should show leadership and, and have them come here and question, why are we doing this, and show them why Coat St. Luke is a leader and not a follower. So we sat on this for a full year. We've had the time to make the changes, and we did. So in good conscience, uh, this is what the third year that we've been doing this. So in two years, we will have spent a million dollars to wash it down the drain. I, but I do take up your challenge. All right. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Kovac, I mean, I'm going to call for the vote, but I will state my opinion. I don't highly recommend breaking the law, but I do agree with you that we should try to change it. So, all in favor? Oh, Anyone opposed? <laughs> Councillor Kovac opposed. Thank I'm you. proud of it. And now we move to uh, item number 15C, Councillor Kovac. So this one I'm very happy to move. Be it resolved that the City of Cote St. Luke Council hereby awards the professional services contract to GHD Consultants Limited, the lowest bidder under the law for a total amount of $60,577 plus applicable taxes and that furthermore the city may consider an amount of 10% plus applicable taxes for any potential contingencies and extras if required that shall first be approved according to the city's procedures 
that the above expenses shall be financed by by law 2500 previously approved by the Ministère des Affaires Municipales et Occupations du Territoire and that the Treasurer Certificate TC18-0099 dated May the 4th, 2018 has been issued by the City Treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the described expenses. This is to award the contract for professional services for traffic light synchronization on Cavendish Boulevard. Right. Excellent. Uh, seconded by Councilor Torchman. Any further discussion? <coughs> so this is a long time coming that we really want to improve the situation for drivers trying to come in and exit our city on Cavendish. And hopefully this synchronization project is going to do it. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. We move to item 14, Councilor Berkeley. 14A. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the Planning Advisory Committee member, Mr. Earl Kimmel, being is hereby replaced by new resident member, said resident member being Ms. Melanie Rothpan, architect, as a member of the Planning Advisory Committee of the City of Cote St. Luke, and this for the year 2018 and 2019, two-year term. The Council further appoints the following <coughs> people as resident substitute members of the Planning Advisory Committee, Ms. Yael Haroche, architect. Okay, moved by Councillor Berkeley. I would say also for the same time period. Okay. For the same two year term. Okay. Moved by Councillor Berkeley, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Any discussion? Um, simply uh, to say, as the chair of the PAC and as um, um, someone who um, has a, a newfound appreciation for the responsibilities of PAC that was chaired <laughs> so <much> by, <laughs> by Ms. Kovac for so many years. Um, we, I think we interviewed uh, a, a few candidates, uh, um, mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Torchman, myself, and uh, Councillor Kovac, and um, a member of staff. And uh, we were uh, very happy to have some very good candidates come forward. And these two uh, women, uh, both architects, both competent, both presiding Code St. Luke, both with fresh and new ideas. And we are hopeful that uh, they're going to add a lot to uh, the, uh, the vision and to the purpose of our, of our PAC committee. Moving forward. So. Moved and seconded. All in favor? All in favor of the new member? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. 14.1A, Councillor Berku. Okay. Moving our feet. 14.1. Coming up. Um, <coughs> this should be on the screen, but if it isn't, I'll just describe it. Coming. So that uh, be it resolved, the site planning and architectural integration programs received March 12, 2018 showing modification to the front facade of an existing single-family semi-detached dwelling on lot 1052684 at 5701 Palmer and prepared by Mr. Uh, Humeni, architect for the Planning Advisory Committee meeting of March 20th, 2018, be approved according to the provisions of Chapter 14 of Bylaw 2217 of the City of Cote St. Luke. Thank you, Councillor Kovac. Seconded by... No, Councillor Berku, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Right. So basically, it's for the uh, proposed plan for the second story extension. The members are in favor. Uh, members of PAC were in favor. The members of council were in favor. Very nice. And the owner should consider a, 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 some kind of extension. But anyway, that's to come later. But it's a second floor extension on. It's very elegant. Home. Yeah. Moved and seconded. All in favor. Very nicely integrated. All in favor. Okay. Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move to 14.2A, Councillor Berku. Uh, we want to add 14.1B just for the purpose of the record. Oh, we'd like to defer uh, the. Okay, uh, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Got it. Okay, so 14.1B. Um, be it resolved that the site plan and architectural integration program for 5700 Kellert Hebrew Academy is deferred to the council meeting of June 11, 2018. And the minor exemption 14.2, um, that the minor exemption for 5700 Kellert Hebrew Academy is also deferred to the council meeting of June 11, 2018. 
and 18. Excellent. Okay. So, well, that's just the first. We don't have to move seconded or anything, right? No. You can announce that it's on the agenda. We need yes. Okay, so we're adding it to the agenda and we're deferring it to Correct. the June 11th meeting. Correct. Is that Beautiful. all clear? That's wonderful. Right. Now, so now 14.2a. All, all in favor of adding it to the agenda? Do we have to add a vote yeah. on it? I, no? Yeah. Which agenda are you adding it to? To, 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 to tonight's agenda. Yeah. So we're adding it to the agenda and we're deferring okay. it to Okay, seconded by Council Kovac. Okay. All in favor. All right. So okay. Everyone, Mitch, Jasky, Council Kajasky, in yes. favor, yes. I, I be it resolved that we add it to the agenda and defer it to June 11th, both items, the site right. planning and the minor exemption. Okay, so it will be one resolution. Correct. Both to be added to the agenda, and then we're going to defer them, because last month when we got to know them in, right. the last month we said we were going to do this, right. we're just going to be consistent with ourselves. No, okay, yeah. exactly. Okay, Thank 14.2a. You. Thank you, Mr. Councilor Burku. Thank you. Now, this is pursuant to the previous um, resolution. This is also referring to 5701 Palmer, and um, that in accordance with the provisions of bylaw G 18 005, the request for a minor exemption regarding the property located 5701 Palmer be and is hereby approved. The whole is more amply delineated hereunder. The request is to allow the construction of a second floor extension to an existing single family semi detached dwelling without having to provide a minimum of two interior parking spaces when having a total dwelling area with a second floor extension of more than 167 um, square meters or 1800 square feet. The whole, notwithstanding the provisions of zoning bylaw 2217, article 7 1 2 1 A. Thank you. So Moved by Councilor Berkeley. We approve the extension and then we give a minor exemption for the parking. Seconded by Councilor uh, Kajowski. Any further discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried. And we move to item 15, General Management, Councilor Kovac. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Be it resolved that the following members of the Cote St. Luke City Council be and hereby authorized to attend, according to the respective availabilities, the Conference of the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to be held in Halifax, Nova Scotia from or around May 31st, 2018 to June the 4th, 2018. Councillor Oren Sabag, Councillor Mitch Kajaski, Councillor David Torgeman, Treasurer Certificate Number TC18-0106 and dated May the 10th, 2018 has been issued by the city treasurer attesting to the availability of funds to cover the ex made expenses for this conference the amount of $10,000 plus applicable taxes that furthermore the city of Cote St. Luke will reimburse reasonable expenses incurred for this purpose upon presentation of receipts for these expenses to the city treasurer. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Cohen. Any discussion? This is the annual conference of Federation of Canadian municipalities and the three new councils that have been elected will have the wonderful experience of learning all the things that they tell us at their at their different uh, lectures and at the trade show and bring that information back to council. So that has been moved and seconded. All in favor? Oh boy! Yeah. Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move to um, item 16, Council Kovac. Be it resolved that, Code Saint, that the Council takes the following stance in view of any agglomeration Council meetings to be held in June 2018 as follows, to authorize the Mayor or his duly authorized replacement to make any decisions he deems necessary and in the best interest of the City of Cote St. Luke and its residents regarding the items on the agenda of the agglomeration Council meetings to be held in June 2018 based on the information to be presented during those meetings. Moved by Councillor Kovac, seconded by Councillor Sibag. Any discussion? All in favor? Anyone opposed? Carried unanimously. And now we move to other business. Councillor Kovac. Mr. Mayor, I would uh, request that uh, we tabled the dog bylaw this evening, which I think is a really uh, laudable initiative as a proud uh, grand. <laughs> Uh, my my children, my grand, my children, grandchildren have a beautiful dog. Um, it's just that the process left me a little bit 
uh, disturbed. So I'd like there to be some kind of a public consultation where not only people who own dogs, but people who don't own dogs have something to say. Um, I think it's a very uh, laudable move forward. I know that we have many, many dog owners in the city. It's just a question of where and where, where and how they should be regulated, the kind of signage that we're going to have going forward, and safety and security issues. Uh, I think it's a very worthwhile and hard work that you've done, Mike, and I, I appreciate it. It's just that I do have some concerns, and I think the public should have something to say as well. So I would hope that some before we actually have the discussion, that there's some kind of a public consultation. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councillor Coe. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the public has had plenty of a chance to speak about this. Uh, not only in the fall did I make it very public, and every single door I knocked on I spoke to about it. Many, most of the people were not dog owners, but in uh, January and uh, following, I've had four meetings, all of which have been well publicized throughout the city, in the local papers, on, on Facebook, in the internet, and we've had a number of non-dog owners who've come. Many have called me, many have emailed me, and we even have a few non-dog owners on this dog owners committee, which has representation from across Coast St. Luke. Excuse me, I, I, I didn't finish, but it was hard to concentrate when other people were speaking. Um, uh, so we have really done our consultation. Um, we've had public council meetings, People can ask a question. This has been since January. I haven't seen anyone come to a council meeting. We had dogs in parks last summer as a trial in a number of parks. There were no problems at all. So uh, I fully expect and hope that this bylaw will be adopted on June 11th. And as Councillor Torchman uh, said to me before, uh, clearly a bylaw can always be adjusted and we will certainly evaluate it after the year. But I think we have responsible dog ownership as well. With this dog owners committee now, uh, the, the members of this committee are committed to making sure that people in their areas pick up after dogs, that people in parks don't abuse the privilege, that people are carrying bags. We already have seen action. I have these uh, cards right now that we've made, and we are giving these out. We have members of the committee. We've already formed district committees in each of the municipal districts. I have two councillors who are dog owners who are on the committee. I have another councillor, Councillor Erdely, who has spent uh, the last couple of years developing the dog run uh, on Coatsy Loop Road. So um, I believe the public consultation will be during the year. The season is short. We hope this will happen in June. And we are all ears every month on the phone, on email, on Facebook, if people have any comments to make. And certainly at the end of the year, we can evaluate uh, in a few months' time how it went. Yep. Go ahead, Councillor Berku. Okay, so um, I'm in favor of the uh, of the uh, bylaw as proposed. In principle, I have a mi few minor adjustments that I would like to see um, in terms of the list of parks where uh, the dogs would not be allowed. But that we can discuss at a public meeting uh, with the consultation process. Have the public here to hear uh, the issues that may be arise. Uh, and uh, I think June 11th is perfectly appropriate time to do it. We can do it at 7.30 in the evening. Uh, I, I'm totally in favor of the proposal, and I would go further and say that we should have it on June 11th at 7.30. Perfect. Okay, moved uh, for June 11th at 7.30 for the public consultation. Is everybody okay with that? Okay, so we will have a public consultation on uh, June 11th at 7.30, so people are aware of all the details of the, by the dog bylaw. And before, we'll be we get, before we vote on it. Before we vote on it, we'll get their input. Excellent. Now, and uh, the bylaw will be available as soon as, as, as soon as possible. I don't know. We're having another draft bylaw available as in, in the, the draft French, bylaw has been in French and English. English. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. So the draft bylaw is available, be available yeah. online. Uh, maybe the suburban can report about it and uh, so on and so forth. So basically, you want to summarize it, uh, Councillor Cohn, so that we. Well, I, I think it's a, a long thing to summarize. I think we're going to post it and people can okay. read it. All right. I, so I do have a summary, but I don't know if people want to sit here for the next okay. 20 minutes so no, I can summarize okay. it. I think at this right. hour will be fine. So basically, to allow dogs in parks, I think that's the that's fundamental thing. Okay, great. great. So we have that said, and now we go to the second question period. Rona, go ahead. <laughs> I have to deal with you. I can solve your pain problem <laughs> if you do something for me. <laughs> now, I want to do writing. What is it? <laughs> the pain problem, and don't, like, don't think that I don't know what I'm saying, that I don't know what I'm saying. This is from experience. 
experience. The pain problem is not in the pain. The problem is not for the pain. It's for the painter, the person that's pain, praying the pain. They dilute that stuff to almost nothing. When they tell you that they need a thousand whatever hands of pain, they only do five hands of pain. And this, this was proven somewhere where I lived before. Not only was it with the pain, it was also with paving the street. So when the guys came to pave the street, they would bring, she's laughing. No, well, we, we could use a paint inspector. They would leave, exactly, we need somebody who wants, they would ring the doorbell in paving the street, and they would ask, do you want your driveway to paint? They used to steal from paving the road and paint everyone's driveway that they collected money for, and the, the, the streets were finished in like two years. So what do I get? What do I want to bring? <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Dita brought it up so I can bring it up. She walked by me and she said that. The snow dome. I bet you nobody ever drove by it and looked at the rats and the food and the garbage that's there. Never mind the height of the snow. It's been, you know, you can't walk all for a walk there without coming back coughing and sneezing and wheezing. It's so pretty, that thing. It's not only the snow that bothers me. And there's a school there and a synagogue right nearby. Nobody's doing anything. The last time, like, everybody turned their head. Zita just, and I wasn't going to talk about the snow dump today. <laughs> there's another problem that I have. But I, I didn't want to bother you here at the council. I used to call the public works because they're in charge of the snow dump, I imagine. The person that answers the phone there, she must have friends in higher places because she's very rude. She never gives a message to anyone. The person that's in charge here never calls anyone back. And it's not only me, because I just leave my name, but several people that live in my building called and they were all, nobody ever spoke to Mrs. Newman. She blows everyone off. How this person answers you, she shouldn't be working there as a receptionist. Okay. Thank you. So what am I getting back to? Well, we're looking at getting, uh, you know, fixing up the snow dump, and any HR issues, we'll deal with HR. Mr. Uh, Mayor, I can give an answer on the snow dump. A quick snow dump. Uh, Councillor Cohen wants to answer uh, on the snow dump. I have the same concern as you because I walk by it every day. I uh, spoke to Miss Newman the other day. Because of the winter we had, the equipment we use, we need a hundred hours in that snow dump, and right now the equipment would break because it's too hard. Now, finally, we're getting weather in the 20s. And if that continues, it's going to be easier to get in there. But sadly, we're not going to be able to do this until sometime in June. Probably, probably not until the middle to the end of June. Last Once, year when you said June, it wasn't until September. No, it was not till September last year. It was gone by. It was gone by July last year. I assure you, it was gone by July. They are going to go in there. I wish. I wish I personally could physically go in there and chop it down. I wish, but we can't. I agree with you. You know, the reality is, is that. That, and we, we've talked to the residents about this. The snow dump has been there well before anyone moved in there. It is a snow dump. And because there's residents there, we've gone the extra mile. We put extra money in the budget every year, and we chop it down. But it's hard as a rock. And it's not, they're not capable of cutting it down right now. I wish they could. Believe me, I'd like it gone now, too. Yeah, but I don't think they feel safe, as hard as it is to start sending people up the top of the mountain. Well, if it's hard enough, they shouldn't have Well, I don't think you want to, God forbid, have someone maybe just slip through there. Anyway, um, in any case, our, our, our public works people okay. really know what they're doing, and I have to take their advice. I have one more thing. Very well said. Sorry, Very well Hi. said, Mike. Sorry. Okay, go ahead, Rhoda. It's 1030. There's, there's one more thing, quickly. What are the chances of banning Something we can dis study. Ask the, you know, ask I know. The, uh, we can study. Bellagio, across the street. The guy shows up like, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. He blows not only that, that leaf blower is so loud, but he blows all the leaves onto the street. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. So then the street cleaner has to come and take it. He's not allowed to do that. Right? He's breaking our bylaw. He's breaking the bylaw. If we would catch him, we'd find him. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Else? Move for adjournment. So move, Mr. Mayor. Seconded by.
councillor kajawski, all in favour we're adjourned, thank you.